Now, the next thing I want to go into is sinus exit block. Okay, there again, we're talking sinus. So what do you know? We know that the impulse is going to come from the SA node because everything that comes from the SA node has the word sinus in it because this is the sinoatrial node. And when the sinoatrial node is working, it produces a sinus rhythm, hopefully. There are conditions where that won't be the case, but those, of course, would be abnormal. In a sinus exit block, the biggest thing I want you to notice here, notice how we look at this rhythm. Okay, first of all, let's, let's just go over the steps. Remember, step number one is we're going to look at the rate. What's step number two? We're going to look at the rhythm overall to see if, we, if something just jumps out at us. And we're looking for all the characteristics of normal. So remember, a normal sinus rhythm has a P, a QRS, and has a T. The P wave is upright and rounded. The same story. QRS is uh, narrow. The T wave is normal. We, it has to meet all this stuff. It has to have a normal PR interval and a normal QT interval. All of that is normal. That's what we're looking for when we're assessing the rhythm. We're seeing is all of that there, and is it all normal? What's step number three? We're going to check for regularity. Remember, as we're looking from left to right, we're seeing is everything the same amount of space apart. So as I go from left to right here, what I notice is, okay, this, let's say this R to R is that distance apart. And then something crazy is going on here. And then I see another R to R and then another R to R. But what I notice is that these R to Rs are about the same. However, let's concentrate on this part. What we notice is everything was just beating like clockwork. There's this little gap. And then everything just starts picking up like clockwork again. But here's the key. There's a a space that equals about one heartbeat's worth of time. So, for instance, there's a beat here, here. It sounds like the next one should have been here, but it's missing. One beat is missing. But then it picks up and it just continues like normal. So the thing that you want to notice with a sinus exit block is where it's a sinus, but it's missing one beat. Okay, so it's sinus, but it's missing one beat. Does that make sense? Okay, that was sinus exit block. That's what you need to know about it. Everything else, it still has to behave like sinus. On the other hand, we're going to go to sinus arrest. Let's go to sinus arrest. All right. Oh, let me back up for one moment. Remember, in our, in our steps. So step number one is check the rate. 300, 150, 100, then 75, 60, 50. And then of course, remember we have, it's 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50. And then it's seven, six, five, four, three, 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 three. And then four plus three is seven. Okay. Just make sure you commit that to memory. Make sure you say over and over and over 300, 150, 100, then 75, 60, 50. Okay. That's step number one is figuring out the rate. Step number two is looking at the rhythm for all the things that are supposed to be there. Step number three is regularity. Remember, it's either regular or it's irregular, but irregular has the two different flavors. It's either regularly irregular or irregularly irregular. <laughs> That's a lot to say. What did I say are, are examples of the irregularly irregular rhythms? A fib, B fib, any kind of fib. What? A fib, B fib, any kind of fib. You got it. Okay. Step number four is where we're going to look for axes. Remember this? I said you're going to look at two leads for axes. What are those two leads? It's, we're going to look at lead one. We're going to look at lead AVF. Now, when it, comes to, when it comes to axes, remember that's this, where you're trying to figure out is it a normal axis, a left axis, a right axis, or extreme right axis deviation. Okay? And, of course, we're going to look at lead one. And we're going to look at lead AVF. And remember, they both have a positive N and a negative N. The red, of course, is in positive here. So when both of them are positive, when lead one and 
and AVF are both positive, that's a normal axis. When one and AVF are both negative, that's extreme right. We said that in left axis deviation, we always start with lead one because why? It's number one. Lead one in, so what we're saying is in left axis deviation, remember the range for left axis deviation goes from negative 30 degrees to negative 90 degrees. And we say that in lead one, it's going to be negative and AVF is going to be, uh, yeah, lead one. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, in left axis deviation, lead one is positive. <laughs> AVF is negative. When I, uh, when I looked at that, I'm like, wait, that doesn't look right. <laughs> yeah, let me say this again. Left axis deviation is where lead one is positive and AVF is negative, okay? Right axis deviation is where lead one is negative and AVF is positive, okay? That's axis. Remember how I told you about how to figure out the mean electrical axis? What you're going to do is find that net zero lead. That's the one that's not positive or negative. And the reason I'm breezing through this is we've already covered all of this. So if you don't, if this doesn't just immediately jump out at you, I'm just saying it so you hear it again. But if it doesn't immediately jump out at you, make sure you go back to, for instance, day four, where I really drove home the point about axis and make sure you really catch that story. When it comes to the mean electrical axis, remember I said you're going to look at your six uh, limb leads. Remember you have one, two, three. Ralph, or one, two, three, run like fast. <laughs> and we go crisscross straight across. So you go to the net zero lead, and then you find the partner. And you look at the, so for instance, if the net zero lead is lead one, I go to the partner of lead one, which is AVF. And I look at AVF. If AVF is positive, I go to the positive end of AVF. If AVF is negative, I go to the negative end of AVF. And whatever that number is, that's the number of degrees for the mean electrical axis. All of this should be review. Let's say that lead, let's say that lead AVR is the net zero lead. I go to the partner, which is that's going to be lead three. And then I go to eat, I go to lead three. And if it's positive, the positive end of lead three would be down here at positive 120 degrees. If it's negative, the negative end of lead three is over here. Okay. And so it would be that uh, number of degrees. So that's going to be um, uh, negative 60 degrees. Okay. Wait, is that right? Um, yes. Okay, and then let's go to step number five. We say step number five is uh, hypertrophy. And then step number six is where we're looking for infarction, okay? I'm just saying this again so that you hear the story so many times. All right, let me just clear some space here. Here's what I want you to know about sinus exit block. We're missing one beat. Let me clear off some of this extra stuff just so you have just that part left. So all of this should be review for you. Okay, let me just clear off some space here. As I'm saying this, I want you to say it with me, though. And if you're finding that you're not able to say it off as quickly, uh, you need to practice some more. Sinus exit block looks like sinus, but it's missing one beat. Sinus arrest. It looks like sinus, but here's the big takeaway. It's missing more than one beat. Okay. Often, for instance, notice how we have a beat here, here. It looks like the next one should be here, and the next one should be here. And then it kicks back in and everything's like normal. So in this case, it actually looks like we're missing two beats but it's greater than one, okay? Often sinus arrest will be at least two beats. So we're gonna say at least, missing at least two beats, okay? Now, so what we just covered is sinus rhythms, all being generated by the SA node. 
we have a normal sinus rhythm, sinus bradycardia, sinus tachycardia, a sinus exit block, sinus arrest, all of those, the pacemaker is the SA node. It's just in normal sinus, it's beating like clockwork. Sinus bradycardia, it's beating slow. Sinus tachycardia is beating fast. Sinus exit block, we're skipping a beat. We're missing one beat. I want to say it that way. I want to say it as missing one beat. Sinus arrest, we're missing two or more beats. Okay? Those are the sinus rhythms. We covered the SA node. Now, I want to get into other rhythms. So we know that the SA node is... It's on the superior posterior wall of the right atrium. So supero posterior in the right atrium. 